Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a part two for answering your guys' most frequently asked questions about traveling, whether that's to Europe, abroad, anywhere else. Uh, my name is Christina. If you guys don't know me, I did travel around Europe for two and a half months of backpacking. So I have a bunch of experience now in that area. So I figured I'd answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get in my comments. So number one, can you get by just by speaking English? So this one is a very easy answer, 100% yes. So I speak English and Spanish, although Spanish wasn't super helpful when we were traveling in most countries other than in Spain, obviously. So I would say 100% you can get around with only speaking English. Do not worry. A lot of people around the world, especially in Europe, if you're going to Europe, speak English or at least a little bit of English. So with them hand signals and stuff like that, you can pretty much get around everywhere. People will understand you. And most of the time, if someone you're speaking to doesn't speak English and there's a local around that is listening to you and does speak English, from my experience, they'll come up and just offer help or translate for you or the guy you're talking to. So yes, you can 100% get by with just English. Number two is specifically for backpacking. If you're going backpacking, I get the question a lot, how much does the backpack weigh? How heavy is it? Everything like that. So I did get the 50 five liter Osprey bag, which I will link in the description in case you guys want the same one. I'm obsessed with that bag. And my actual bag was probably around 30 pounds. So that was it with everything included. That's with the detachable day bag and the actual bag. So like around 30, 32 pounds. So it was pretty heavy. I'm like 112 pounds. So it's a significant amount on my body weight. I will say that the strap around your hip helps alleviate a ton of the weight. So this is really dependent on how big your backpack is, but my 55 liter was packed to the brim. So if you're gonna get a 55 liter, I would say that's probably around the weight you're gonna get, like around 30, 34 pounds. If you're gonna get a bigger bag, you could just calculate how much weight was technically per liter in my bag and just calculate it out for your bag. But it was very, very heavy. So keep in mind, maybe do some squats before you go, work out a little bit, gain some extra muscle mass because it is going to be heavy. Next question is what are the best shoes for backpacking so this is a personal preference for everybody but I only brought two pairs of shoes because that's all I had room for so I bought a pair of white Converse they were just low top Converse because I wanted something that I could interchange that was more like sneaker like and then looked cute with my outfits because I really wanted to keep making sure that I looked good and felt good so I brought those Converse but then my everyday shoes and this might be controversial were Doc Martens I am not sponsored by them or anything but I just really think that they're good walking shoes they are really really cute and I wanted shoes that were both fashionable and useful for every day so I did actually hike in my docks I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not but I hiked in them I walked in them I did everything in them I traveled in them I wore them on nights out and I loved having them I wouldn't trade them for any other shoe I don't think that I personally could have found a shoe that I thought looked as good and also was super comfortable and fit as well and was useful for so many different types of activities so i did bring the smaller converse like i said just as an alternative shoe and it did have a little bit of arch support and everything in it but mainly the shoes that i wore were doc martens dr martens i wouldn't change it if i could go back for me it worked fine and i really really enjoyed how it looked with my outfits and then the functionality of them as well another question i get all the time is how long should you go for and obviously this is dependent on many things do you have the time off are you quitting your job how much money do you have is it your first travel experience so a lot of things can actually go into this and it's a very important part of planning one because if you've never been traveling before maybe booking a six month one wouldn't be right for you because you want to get a feel for it and how much money it's going to cost and everything like that and you obviously wouldn't have the time off work but I will say I think that going for over a month is definitely definitely the better thing if you can if you have the time obviously I know not everyone is as lucky that can just quit their job or has enough money to do it so I am very grateful that I got to go for longer but I will say the travel to Europe and back eats up one or two days on each side because of the whole jet lag getting to and from the airport you're tired you know everything like that so in my opinion if the longer you can go the better i personally wish i could have gone for longer but you know you run out of money you gotta come back so i wish i could have gone for six months or seven months i hope to one day be able to do one that is 
that length because I really would love to just continuously travel and hit more cities and go to maybe more continents and everything like that. But it's again, really dependent on the person. To me, I would just say, look at how much time you have available think about how much money it's going to cost. I will put the budget video that I had up here so you can kind of calculate for how long that you want to go. Look at your experience. If you have never traveled before, maybe go for a shorter trip. If you're an avid traveler, you can book a much longer trip. Are you going alone or with friends and what is their schedule like? Or if you are going alone, are you prepared to be alone like that for a long period of time or do you just want it to be quick? So I would just ask yourself all those questions and then decide based on those things for how long you want to go but my sweet spot I would say if you can for longer than a month less than three months or around three months because that gives you a short period of time but it's also kind of long so it's just that really good intermediate I also get a lot of questions about the hostels specifically today I'm gonna to be answering how do you go grocery shopping when you are in another country and do hostels have kitchens appliances everything like that so I'll start off with the hostels. It is very, very dependent on which hostel you are. So I will say I have been in hostels where there is a, a complete kitchen with plates and bowls and knives and pans and pots and everything like that. They typically, from my experience, don't have anything like oil or any sort of ingredients. So all the ingredients you have to provide yourself. But I would say like 50% of them have the actual requirements to be able to cook because obviously you're not going to buy pots and pans and things like that, strainers. So I will say around 50% of the hostels that I went to actually had equipment. The rest of them oftentimes had microwaves or fridges and maybe that would be the extent of it so do keep in mind when you're going to a hostel check out the kitchen area if they have a kitchen area or if they just have a storage area just check out what they have and then grocery shop based on that so if you have a hostel that has all the cooking equipment you can obviously buy eggs and things that you need to cook maybe pasta things like that but if not they just have a microwave you might have to get like a pre-made meal and put it in the fridge and then just microwave it whenever you need or yogurts or something like that i did bring a spoon fork knife a contraption which will also be linked down below and that's what i used personally instead of the silverware it just made it easier for me it was my own i knew that it was clean and it had all the things i needed like it has a can opener a fork spoon knife everything like that as far as grocery shopping though in other countries it's just the same as it is as it is in the United States you just go to the grocery store look up grocery store in English on Google Maps it'll bring up tons of options you just go there pick out what is good for you in that moment so again keep in mind how long are you going to be there is there a kitchen are there plates you know keep in mind those things and that way just choose whatever you think and then you can bring it back to your hostel cook it store it do whatever you want with it i will say oftentimes we did go for non-perishables so things like bars protein bars protein shakes um, just anything that we could pretty much store like chips and things like that Just something that we could store in our room or in our bed or something like that because it just didn't make it easier We did although use the kitchen a few times But for the most part I will say we did get non-perishables and then ate out whenever we could if we could afford it Last question for today's series and I do get this question quite a lot Even though I've kind of touched on it in other videos is did I plan every single city country like in order before I went and I did not I have mentioned this before, but I just got my flight there and flight out, just the cheapest flights I could out of like major cities. And so my flight there was in Venice, flight out was Barcelona. And the way I did my itinerary is just before I went, like one or two weeks before, I planned three general routes. So let's say like we went kind of like this, and then there was another route that went like this, and then another one that went like straight up and down, you know? So I planned out three potential routes, and then I chose the one that was the closest to what I wanted, but it was non specific. It was more just like like Italy, Switzerland, France, Germany, you know, things like that it wasn't like city by city. And then from there, we just kind of were very spontaneous. We didn't plan anything. We had a general direction that we wanted to go in, but we just took it a week at a time, honestly, a few days at a time. And I mentioned this before, but if someone was like, oh, you really should go to Lake Como. We would be like, okay, scrap wherever we thought we were gonna go, let's go to Lake Como, and then we'll figure it out from there, see what connects and everything like that. So we did do it very, very spontaneously. The only thing that was pre-booked or pre-planned was the flight in and the flight out, and then just a general idea of a direction. But I will say we didn't actually end up sticking too much to that plan. 
In our original plan, we only had like five countries and a few more cities in each country, but we ended up doing 10 countries and 18 cities. So we got to see a lot more than we originally thought. And that was just purely because we were being very, very spontaneous. And if we felt like we'd seen enough, we would move on to the next place. If we wanted to stay longer, we would book extra days, take away another place. So we did not book anything. And I really, really recommend that if you are a spontaneous person, definitely do that. I think it really made our trip significantly better than planning out every single detail because first of all that would take absolutely forever if things don't go according to plan it's gonna stress you out which will oftentimes happen trains get canceled things like that very stressful and it just left room for new adventures and cool places we wouldn't have gotten to see before so that is the end of this video guys if you have any more questions just let me know down below I did do another version of this part one so I'll link that up here with some more questions that I get from you guys if you have any specific questions they'll leave me down below like this video and subscribe if you like it and I'll see you guys in my next video.